project called Terraform Examples. And to tell you a story of how I started contributing to that project. So to start with, uh, just a little bit more than half a year ago, I started a new job as a cloud native engineer with container solutions. And then when I joined here, then I thought at this role, probably I need to learn a few things that would be important. So I thought Terraform would be something really important for working with cloud and for sure learning about different cloud providers, especially the three major most widely used cloud providers. I had some quite some pure experience with things like all things operations, DevOps, config management, but those specific areas I thought I really need to learn more here. And actually I didn't know where to start. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about how I felt at that point, it was like, I was a little bit worried that maybe I lack some basic knowledge around cloud and infrastructures codes well. Mm. And also I was a bit disoriented to be honest because learning about all things cloud, it is a huge space. So I really didn't know where should I start with this. Mm. But at this point, just second week into the job, I've seen this message from a colleague working with us in Container Solutions. So this was from Ian Mail, who is a well-known author of a few different technical books. Among, among those, there is uh, learning Git the hard way and also learning Terraform the hard way. So what Ian said was, why not to start a project, open source project called Terraform Examples with the aim as to create a really, really simple repository of examples to illustrate different kinds of Terraform functionality. And yeah, at that point, this really got my interest. So I was interested what is the idea here and what how Ian described it. It was that, okay, the theme here, it is all about saving time. And we can imagine two different kinds of users who would use this project. So one user is someone who, need, who is in a hurry basically and needs to get some future of Terraform to get it working as quickly as possible and then to iterate on. And another possible user is someone who is just learning Terraform and wants to have some examples to play with. So I thought, okay, it seems I'm just this second kind of user. Let's see what I can do in this project. So basically I said, yeah, I really want to contribute here. And while doing that, I want to learn all about cloud and all about Terraform as well. I uh, wasn't sure where to begin again, but what I thought was that, okay, actually I have quite some experience with Kubernetes. I know this area really well, and I'm also super interested in all things config management. So why not combine those things together and actually I started by working on some very simple at the beginning examples of how to use Terraform to automate Kubernetes. Okay, from here, let's jump into that repository and I will show you the simplest possible example that I started with. What we can see here is our Terraform examples repository there is a number of different providers that we use here and that we give examples. 
if we take a look in the, to the Kubernetes examples and then the resource type config map, we've got some simple example here. And then inside this example, there is our main TF where we can see the structure of typical example in this project. So before each block of code, we give links to documentation to help users to then deepen this, their knowledge. If you need to iterate on it, add something more, you can follow the docs. We start by configuring the provider to say what version is required. And then we move on to configure the resource itself. So what we can see here, it's like we use resource names that should be self-explanatory. Then, and after that, a very simple, like shortest possible list of attributes to actually create such resource. Then let's give it a try. I have a kind Kubernetes cluster running here. I have this example, we've got our main TF, and we also have two helper scripts. Those are run sh and destroy sh. What those scripts do, it's basically to run all the commands needed to apply the example. So if I do the run sh, it will do terraform init, then terraform plan, and then terraform apply. If it would be a real cloud provider, it would handle also all the authentication needed for the cloud. But in this case, with Kubernetes, it was not needed. We can see the resource was created. It was a config map. And let's take a look into our cluster. So we've got a config map created. with the contents that we've just configured here. Okay, so that was the simplest possible example that of what we have here. Uh, there are, of course, way more examples there. Some of those are more complex. So for example, working with Kubernetes, we might want to create a few different resources at the same time and combine those together. You can see this, for example, in deployment and service, but let's keep it for now to keep on time. To talk only a little bit about, uh, again, how we structure things here. So everywhere we've got links to documentation, all the content, we try to keep it as simple as possible. We use names that are unique across all examples so that you can combine multiple examples together when build building your solution. And the attributes used here, it's also like minimum set of attributes. A little bit again about main principles. It's all as simple as possible, self-contained, so limited to one file and clear. Those names of resources should be verbose and unambiguous. What is the structure of the whole repository, the, the whole project? There are two main areas. One is to showcase different kinds of Terraform providers, like if you want to work with AWS, Google Cloud, whatever else, uh, any other cloud provider. So then you would get examples for different resource kinds there. And the other thing is different features of Terraform. So let's say you want to learn how to work with Terraform modules. And then you've got a very simple example, how to create a module and how to create a consumer that would use that module. That's, yeah, that's the basic structure. And then, one another interesting thing about the project. So a few weeks into the project, a colleague joined us to create a web interface to this project. 
let's jump into a browser very quickly. So you can not only just clone the project that use those files from there and scripts from there, but you can also browse in a browser and there is a very nice search feature as well. So let's say I want to look for how to use the for each feature in Terraform. If I search for an example here, we can see two different examples and one of them is how to create AWS instances with for each. And then if we go there, we've got AWS instance for each and we can see here how to use the for each feature of Terraform with the AWS instance resource kind. So it's yet another way to, to use those. You can also just copy paste code from here. Okay, let's jump back into the slides. The next thing I wanted to talk about is our CI pipeline that we've built into the project. So it's, uh, it's related to what uh, Yasin was just talking about. So it's a good practice to test and check your Terraform code. So basically we wanted to do it automatically and for, in the pipeline we've used uh, GitHub Actions for that. And we've got jobs like to automatically run Terraform Lint, to run Terraform Validate, Terraform Format as well. And also we've got those providers jobs, which function is actually to apply each of the examples on the real cloud provider to check not only if, the, if we have a correct Terraform code, but also does it really work with the cloud provider? So by doing that, we can speed up the development process in this project by automatically verifying all the code. And then going back to my story, how did it go for me contributing to this project? Uh, what kind of progress did I make here? I started with those simple Terraform Kubernetes examples, then moved on to playing a little bit on how can I use Helm with Terraform, how to create different Google Cloud resources, how to use different backends for storing Terraform state, and then also worked on this CI pipeline on those scripting. From there, I moved, I moved on to reviewing pull requests to, to help others as well, and then became a project maintainer. So it meant I started to facilitate project meetings and also helped with onboarding for new contributors to the project. And then uh, I'm near to the end, but what have I learned in this project? So first thing, was that contributing to open source, it feels really, really great. Like it's great to be able to share what I've learned with others and also uh, to share something that could be useful to others. That was really good. Then I've learned that you actually don't need practically any prior experience before you can start contributing. So I was able to learn everything that was needed along the way. And that was really great. And the last thing is that even with such a simple project, it actually gave me opportunity to learn quite a few things. So I've learned about different Terraform techniques, about different cloud providers, then how to use GitHub Actions. And I've done quite a bit of bash scripting as well. Then the most important part, uh, what we can see is basically a collage of all the people who has contributed to the project so far. So thanks to, 
to all these people, basically we've got now quite a big library of examples there. We've got a very nice automation for the CI. We also have a great front end. So yeah, a really big thank you for everyone who already contributed. And then to end with, just last thing, how can you contribute here in this project? I would say the first thing would be, you can just give it a try, see what's there in this project, see how it works for you and please give us feedback. Do you think it is good or maybe we should improve something? You can create issues if you see any bugs or improvements needed. And we also have a list of open issues. So if you want to work on some pull requests, you can take a look on those issues and choose something to work on. And with that, I wanted to thank you all for listening. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. I always love kind of seeing like a good like call out slide. It's just always great to see when people get credit for all the work they've done. And this is a great session. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's thank you for joining us. We're 